Hello and welcome to another video with me, Andrew. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use the whole operation within FreeCAD's Part Design Workbench. The whole operation tool allows us to create a complex whole in one operation, rather than applying multiple processes which could potentially clutter our model tree. This operation may differ depending on if you're running the standard FreeCAD package or running RealFunders mod like I will be in this video. This version has more features, as well as being able to actually model the thread on our parts. We can locate the whole operation up here on our tool ribbon. The location of your icon may vary, as I've made my icons larger to make it easier to see. By the looks of it, you can only use the whole operation if it's on a circle sketch. I've tried squares, hexagons, simple points, and all of these yield an error message. You can create a hole with a slot sketch, although it ends up creating two holes at the two points of the slot. I have here a simple additive cube. The width and length are set to 30 millimeters and the height is set to 10. On this top face, I have created two sketches, just to show how the whole operation starts. When it comes to selecting a circle sketch, the whole diameter doesn't have to be constrained. So like I've done here, I've just created myself a rough circle, which is not constrained to anything, along with the diameter and the radius. If I don't select the sketch and click on the whole operation, it will prompt me to select a sketch. So I'm going to select the center one and press OK. You'll see this parameters box appears to the left of our screen. At the top, two tick boxes are selected, show preview and show on top. Show preview allows us to see what we're doing live. As we make changes, our preview will update. Show on top just gives us a different perspective and makes our preview a little bit clearer for us to see. Then we have a new solid. This just creates a solid of our parameters. So if I create an M6 thread and have new solid selected, it creates that and discards the original cube. Perhaps this could be used to create a bolt. Below our tick boxes, we have a few subheadings. Threading and size, hole cut, drill point, and misc. I'll start at the top and I'll work my way down, describing what each do. Under the threading section, we have the drop down profile. In this drop down, we have different thread types. This list at the moment is limited compared to what is available. However, the most common types are there. Both ISO metric regular, which I'm assuming is coarse, such as M6 by 1 or M8 by 1.25, and ISO metric fine, as well as UTS coarse, UTS fine, and UTS extra fine profiles. For this tutorial, I'm just going to select ISO metric regular profile. You'll see now that I've selected the profile, the threaded tick box has become available which if we don't tick, the hole we create here simply becomes a clearance hole for whatever thread size we've selected. So if I select an M5 thread, it sets the diameter to 5.5, as that's the clearance hole for an M5 bolt. Similarly, if I create an M10 thread, it will give me the clearance hole for an M10 bolt. However, for this tutorial, I'm going to tick threaded. Now that we've selected the threaded box, another tick box is available and this one won't be available in the standard FreeGAD program. As it says, this allows us to model the thread geometry. So again, I'm going to tick that one on. As of right now, it doesn't actually show the thread, but once we press OK, it will give us our geometry. Below the model thread tick box, we have this blanked out custom thread clearance and clearance. Now I'm not entirely sure what this actually does. I've tried a few different combinations to make the tick box clickable, but nothing seems to work. The only way I can get it to appear was saying OK to the parameters I had set and then going back into edit the whole operation, but that still doesn't seem to do much and I can't see what effect it has on the geometry. Below that we then have our direction, right hand thread and left handed thread. So for instance a left handed thread would be used in the left hand pedal of a bike to stop it from coming loose when cycling. As I showed earlier we have our thread sizes and for ISO metric regular profile this runs from M1 all the way down to M68. Below this we have fit, and this never seems to become selectable in the combinations that I've tried, so I'm going to assume that it's always set to standard and we can't change that at this current moment. We then have the class drop down. The letter H at the end is for internal threads, and the letter G is for external threads. This bit doesn't really matter in my opinion unless you're going to create a technical drawing for manufacturer. The lower the number, the smaller the tolerance and the touch of the fit. Our diameter is currently preset to 8.5, as that's the drill size for an M10 thread. If our thread was an M10 fine, then our diameter or our drill size would be larger to account for this. 
our hole depth type can even be set by dimension or through all. This selection is entirely up to you, but I'd say it's better practice to set a specific dimension. Below hole depth, we have thread depth type. And on this drop down, we have three options, hole depth, dimension, and tapped DIN 76. Now hole depth will set our thread depth, which is just below this one, to the depth that we have set our hole. So if I set this to 30 mil, you'll see that our thread depth is also set to 30 mil. Now the actual depth of the thread is modeled to the flat of the drill hole. So the actual thread will not go past this flat here. If we set the drop down to dimension, we can then change the depth of our thread. So let's say you want a, a hole depth or a drilled hole of 30 mil, but you only want a thread of 10 mil. So when we say OK and accept these parameters, our thread will only be modeled 10 mil into a hole that should be 30 mil. Tapped in 76 is a German standard, I believe. I've done a little bit of research, but I can't seem to find a simple explanation. Only that it's a standard for thread runouts and undercuts. So beneath threading and size, we have hole cut. And on this drop down called type, it's currently set to none. But we have a few different options here, including different standards of bolts. We've got countable, which will allow us to countable the actual hole itself. And again, we can set our diameters. So let's say we need a 15 mil countable uh, and we only want it 5 mil deep, then we can also set that like so. We also have countersink, and we have a few others here, cheese head, countersink socket screw, deprecated, and cap screw deprecated. Both of the countersink items seem to be exactly the same, but the items that have deprecated at the end of their names, I'm assuming that they are to be changed or replaced at some point. For the countersink, we can change the angle to suit any type of countersink bolt, like so. We have a few options here under drill point, and this again is just for flexibility. We can either have our drill set at an angle, such as here, this 118 degree angle, or a carbide 140 degree drill angle for harder materials. I'd say again, this isn't a massive deal when it comes to designing, as if you're getting something manufactured, I would assume they'd pick the correct drill for the material. Although saying that, you may need a particular angle just so that it doesn't break through a certain face. We can also set our drill to flat, which would remove the angle altogether. If I set it back to angle and tick take into account for depth, then our depth dimension is now directly related to the very tip of our drill hole. So when I go back up here and I set our drill depth to 10 mil, remember our piece here is 10 millimeter thick, our geometry, and you'll see that our drill hole is now exactly 10 millimeter to the tip of our drill. If I untick that, you'll see that it goes to the flat of our drill. In the MISC section, we can alter the taper, which at the moment, as there's no way of creating BSPT or NPT threads, could be something that gets added or changed in the future. However, just to change that, we can say tapered, 85, and you'll see how our drill hole changes. We can also set that to 95, like so. Reversed simply moves it up above our geometry. But for now, I'm just going to leave those both ticked off, like so. Down the bottom here, we have fit tolerance, fit joint type, inner fit, inner fit joint type. Now on the drop down here, we have arc, tangent, intersect, and the same on this drop down here. I can't get any of these to work, so again, I'm not entirely sure what they do and how they affect our thread geometry. Something is happening because I can hear my computer ramp up and down, but there's no obvious changes to the model. Again, if you are aware of what these actually do and how they can affect our geometry, please let me know in the comments down below. One thing I will say before I press OK is just to make sure that our hole depth is definitely past our main geometry, mainly because if I was to press OK now, you'd end up with half a thread still to go or half a turn of thread still to go. So I'm going to set this just past the point, so we'll say 12 mil, and I'm going to say OK. Now that I've pressed OK, we can see that our thread has been modelled into our geometry and you can see that it breaks through the other side. I'm just going to quickly change the appearance of our geometry to about 50% transparency, just so that you can see the thread a little better, like so. You can go back in and edit the whole operation, but just be aware it can be a little bit buggy. So you can see here, our profile is not currently set to ISO. So if I was to press OK now, it would just create a normal hole going through the center without giving us our thread geometry. 
So just be aware of that if you are going to edit. So just make sure that you do set it to your specified type. Otherwise you'll have to go back in and set all of your parameters again. So can we actually move our whole or our original sketch without affecting our thread geometry? And yes, you can. If we go on the drop down here and the sketch that we selected, I can double click onto it and I can move that around wherever I want it. Click and close. As you can see, it updates like so. You can even move it directly to the corner and get a really nice side shot of our thread. So we know that we can move our original sketch around to actually change the position of our thread geometry. But what about altering our original geometry? So let's say I want to change the height of this box. So I can double click on that, say 5mm, and say OK. Now it may, may take a little bit of time depending on your computer processing power, but as you can see our thread is perfectly fine. For another example, what I've got here is I've created myself a simple datum line just in the center of our original geometry, in this case our box. And what I want to do is I want to create a polar pattern of our threaded geometry. So I'm going to select our hole that we've created, click on our polar pattern up here on our tool ribbon, and on, on the drop down on an axis, I'm going to select reference and select our datum line. As you can see it then polar patterns, like so. And let's set this to five. And there we have it, we can actually polar pattern the whole operation fairly easily without any hassle. We can also do exactly the same with the linear pattern, the mirror pattern, and also the multi-transform. I think there's still a lot to add to the whole operation tool within FreeCAD. At the moment, it doesn't really add a whole lot of benefits to actually creating a threaded hole, especially with the tolerance selection, as this isn't specified on the drawing when you select it. However, that being said, it's something I'm personally going to use a lot more, now that I know I can actually model the thread with ease. It makes my parts look a lot cooler and it adds another level of detail to make you even more excited about what you've created. I really think it could be a great tool in the future versions of FreeCAD and I look forward to seeing how it changes and integrates with the design process. That's all for today's tutorial. Hopefully I've taught you something new that you can add to your FreeCAD tool belt and take into current or future projects. If you have any further information relating to the whole operation, please let me know in the comments down below so that you can also help other FreeCAD users. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and if you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and as always, have an absolutely epic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.